Hello, I'm Thomas Williams, presenter and canon theologian at the Cathedral Church of St. Peter in St. Petersburg. On April 21st, the church celebrates St. Anselm of Canterbury, who died on this day in 1109. The gospel reading appointed is from John chapter 3. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Do you know the expression love language? I gather that it's something out there in the culture that I missed, as I so often miss things that are out there in the culture. But I started hearing it recently. Cooking is his love language. Her love language is keeping things well organized and running smoothly. It's clear enough even to me what it means. Your love language is the way you express your love, not by what you say, but by what you do. Anselm's love language was theology. And I don't just mean that he loved doing theology. I mean that his love for God found expression in the patient, painstaking, careful exploration of the mysteries of God. There were other things he did because he had to. He had duties first in his monastic community at the Abbey of Beck in Normandy, and then for the last tempestuous 26 years of his life as Archbishop of Canterbury. He carried out those duties conscientiously, if not always terribly effectively. He would be known to history even today, even if he had never put pen to paper. But none of that came anywhere close to being his love language. Anselm starts from faith, which is not for him just belief, but a deep love and longing for God. And you know how it is when you love someone. You want to be with them. You want to know them better and better. And you want, above all else, to rest more and more in your love for them and their love for you, to luxuriate in the peace and comfort, and yet somehow also the challenge and endless surprise of the beloved. God was Anselm's great love, and theology was his love language. In working out the best language to say what can never be fully expressed, Anselm was, as Jesus says in our gospel reading, doing what is true and coming to the light. Doing what is true, not just expressing truth, but enacting it. Working out new ways of approaching the unapproachable light in which God dwells. So inventive in argument, so penetrating in his language, not to dazzle us with his brilliance, not even to furnish our minds with more adequate thoughts, but for love, to express love, to awaken love, to deepen love, to fix our minds on the beloved more and more so that we can bask ever more deeply in the peace and comfort and yet somehow also the challenge and endless surprise of our beloved. Anselm's conviction was that this enterprise of faith-seeking understanding would bring the believer something like first-hand experience, that we would come not just to rely on what we believe, or even to rely on the one in whom we believe, but that we would somehow come to see the beloved, as it were, face to face. And is that not what we long for when we love, to see the beloved's face? I tell this story with some trepidation, 
but it is the best way I know to get this across. I was once working out a technical bit of Anselm's Christology for a book I was writing. And in the midst of that rather dry work, I had the closest thing to a mystical experience I have ever had. I could just see the perfect humanity and perfect divinity of Christ without confusion, without change, without division, without separation. It was as if I simply experienced the truth of the Incarnation. The evangelical Anglican poet William Cooper wrote, Sometimes a light surprises the Christian while he sings, and sometimes a light surprises the Christian while he works out technical bits of theology. What is your love language for God? How do you come to see the beloved face to face? How can you bask ever more deeply in peace and comfort and yet somehow also the challenge and endless surprise of our beloved. In honor of St. Anselm, now we can do better than that, in communion with St. Anselm, I encourage you to find your love language for God, who found his love language for you, and sent his only Son into the world so that you might have eternal life.